I'm Lone Grey, and welcome to Surviving Your First Night in Darkwood. I was a little hesitant to do this series, but I got a lot of YouTube comments on the current playthrough that we're doing on uh, how to survive, and a lot of questions, and also people just watching the series in hopes of, uh, you know, picking up some tips and kind of using it as a guide. Uh, so I decided I'll do a... I, I don't want to call it a walkthrough, I really don't, because I... I don't really want to <laughs> I don't want to do a walkthrough I really don't but uh I'm gonna play through the game and kind of explain how I play and also I really want to make this a community effort so uh for those of you who are Darkwood veterans and who have a lot of experience in the game leave your comments down below in the comments field and help everybody out and uh we'll we'll make it a cool little you know starting guide and tutorial to help those who are uh, unfamiliar with the game and um, kind of new to the game out and get them started up so they can survive. We're only going to be playing through, I, I don't know, we'll do this one video and see how it does. If you guys like it, then, um, you know, depending on how many likes and views and stuff, uh, we'll take it from there and see what happens. But uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of explanation, so it's not going to be for everybody. If you're a veteran of the game or you've played the game here, let's pause it so we don't run down the clock for our daytime. Um, it's This series is definitely not going to be for you. I'm going to be explaining everything that I'm doing. going to be going over the uh, weapons movesets, how the workbench functions, how the generator functions, kind of uh, different tactics for you know surviving this first night. So just, just, uh, just know that. In the beginning, and I'm not by any means or any stretch of the imagination an expert at this game. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind. You know, just uh, take what I say at face value. Not everything I say here is going to be correct. You know, not at all. I'm not going to be reading through NPC dialogue. I'm not going to be reading through, you know, the oven stuff that we're about to do right now. Things like that. No story, no lore. You know, it's just going to be really uh, kind of dry. <laughs> so, it, it's going to be instructional. Instructional. So, Chapter one, uh, we're skipping the prologue. You know, you can do the prologue. It's not a problem. Um, chapter one, we start in our hideout. Hideouts in the game are where you stay during the evening times. There's three different locations, um, each one harder than the last. So we start out in the dry meadow. Silent Forest is the second hardest, and the old woods is the third hardest in chapter one. Uh, there is a hideout in each location, so and that is the only place you can stay. You can't stay anywhere else during the evening. So you have to be under the protection of each hideout. So, so yeah. So we start here. The first thing you want to do when you awaken is go over to the oven. The oven is a... We can examine the oven. Um, basically, the oven has this protective gas. You cook up mushrooms. The mushrooms are already there. You don't need to put them in or anything. Uh, it, it emits protective gases through the piping uh, that is strewn about your house. So that's what keeps the monsters kind of at bay. Mainly one particular monster, which is just this red tendrilled snake thing that will kill you if you leave the boundaries of the protective gases. So you just examine, look at the weird bottle, and uh, look inside the pot. And then you can cook. And once you cook, you come to this screen, which is your your um basically it's kind of like your level up this is where you get your perks from uh we'll go over this more when we actually have mushrooms you can do the game without using this system whatsoever until chapter two where it, it kind of forces you to start using essence but for the purposes of this uh this video tutorial i guess oh god i hate i hate that i'm doing a tutorial <laughs> it's gonna be i'm more afraid of the comments so basically Basically, if you if you have like anything to say or anything to add, or if I get something wrong, just be just be nice, please, <laughs> for the sake of everybody. Just be nice about it. I definitely am uh, interested from the community in construct constructive criticism. So I will I will love you. I will love you forever. Uh, it'll be great. So yeah. So that's your oven. It's all lit up and everything. Every time you visit a new hideout, this is you have to turn on the oven if you're going to stay there. You have to. You got to remember it. I always forget, and it'll be. It'll be nighttime, and uh, I'll end up uh, forgetting and having to run to the oven and cook. So, um, after the oven's taken care of, loot. Just loot everything in your home. Everything. Just uh, get all of it. All of it. Um, we have a workbench there. Yesterday I barricaded the windows. Yep, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we'll leave those mushrooms there for now. We'll cook here in a minute. Cook up some mushrooms and stuff. But, uh, yep, grab the... Stuff in here. There's a little mushroom book. Title reads the use of mushrooms in the household. 
Yep, that kind of just tells you about mushrooms and how they function, I think, right? Are we able to look at the mushroom book? No, okay. For some reason, I thought there was a more in-depth thing and tells you uh, that t tells you how to uh, properly use the mushrooms. But uh, that's okay. It's okay. It's not a worry. So yeah, there's all that loot. I usually leave the bear trap there. So yeah, just keep that bear trap there. We'll run outside real quick. These log piles right here, always loot them. They will sometimes have uh, planks and nails in them. So you'll see them on the outside of the houses. This one never does, but uh, just as a uh, kind of a reminder. There's two more mushroom patches, or maybe just one more. Isn't there one on this side? No, there's just one more mushroom patch right there, which we will grab. This is our generator. Um, turns the lights on and off. So um, a lot of the game, it does, it, even though it says it won't hold your hand, the game does kind of hold your hand in the beginning. So we got enough fuel for one night. It, it basically tells you where to go and what to do for the most part. We also have a note. You know, kind of telling you what to do. You know, turn the generator on before dark. Hiding in the shadows won't do any good. They're coming either way. So, yeah. There's a corpse here, too. This torch, very important. Very, very important. Um, don't put it on your hotbar and then scroll over it because it'll activate and it'll start draining. So, it has a durability meter, which is the red. It's denoted by that red right there. So, uh, don't do that. Let's grab these mushrooms. We'll get both of them. There is one thing I like to do with the mushrooms, but we... Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, this is our workbench. I, I know it seems a lot of information to take on all at once, but uh, you'll, get, you'll get used to it. This is our workbench. This is where we craft things. You can upgrade your workbench. You can upgrade your items that you make. Like, we'll make a plank with nails um, fairly soon, and you'll be able to upgrade it with more nails, things like that. And you can also repair the items, because as you use them, just like the torch, you can't repair the torch. But uh, as you use them, uh, they'll lose durability. So you can repair them for, uh, for a minimal cost. Um, with a mushroom, we can make an antidote. So if you step on mushrooms, you get poisoned, which isn't very great. It's a really, really easy way to die. So there's a lot of mushrooms all over the place in the world. So you usually want to have at least one of these on you at all times. Oh, or a bandage. I mean, a bandage will take care of the poison, too. But I like to at least have one um, to stay safe. I haven't been doing it lately, but uh, but yeah. So, inventory space. This is all our inventory space for the workbench. We can also use the... Uh, there's a little wardrobe right here, if you can see it on my cursor. And then there's also the one that was down here. So, we'll be dragging that into this room uh, before the evening. But let's just dump our inventory in there. Kind of keep it open so we can go... Uh, loot some stuff here pretty soon we're gonna take off and we have a specific location I do the same exact thing every time I load up a new game so uh, so yeah I, I don't really deviate from uh, <laughs> from the plan I usually just do the same thing for uh, the dry meadow every time so um, you start off with zero essence we have an efficiency of one which is um efficiency meaning how much essence you can extract from said mushroom that you have so we can get 10 essence from that which is a uh, pretty good for us right now you'll get diminishing returns the further you go throughout the game and level up um the mushrooms just won't extract as much so you need a better efficiency oven which will be at the uh the other hideouts so once you get to hideout two the efficiency will be greater same with uh, hideout three so all right um anything else we need to talk about here let's uh, organize let's organize before we take off i usually take off come back and then um and then organize where i'm going to be staying for the night but uh, we'll be staying in this room i always stay in this room I, f I find it the easiest to set up and uh, defend your first night Usually, you don't get visited by too much horribleness. Um, usually, pretty easy to defend your uh, your home on the first night. Not a lot of enemies come by. The game kind of gives you a little bit of a leeway there. But I don't know, Ben. I've had some first night banshees before. I've had some first night bullshit busting through my door, uh, killing my ass on the first night, which is a terrible feeling. Terrible feeling. Um, Wardrobes you can drag. I like to push them because it's faster like this and you can run on them Which will uh, you know use your sprint button. And, uh, yeah, you can do that Just depends. I'm not gonna grab that wardrobe quite yet. Just gonna grab this lamp And uh, push it into the room and then we'll uh, take off and go visit a location That uh, is pretty important to start with 
I wouldn't start with any other location. Just this one. You can see the pipes right here too. Uh, and you can see the gas coming out of them. So very important. Stay within the boundary. It's l like right about where the fence line is. That's about where you want to stay. You don't want to go wandering out at night uh, too far from your home. You could definitely go out and wander around and kill enemies and whatnot. Uh, it's a good way of gathering resources. Jeez. Jeez. That lamp is giving me troubles. <laughs> That's okay. All right, let's take off. So, um, first location we are going to be going to, there is an X on our map. So, underground entrance. I highly recommend just doing what the game kind of tells you to. It's leading you. It's not going to lead you astray. They're telling you to go to, to there, so go to there. Um, we have our torch on our hotbar. You, you can use your torch as a weapon. So, um... If you're not familiar with the controls, you hold down... I, I don't recommend using a controller, uh, just personally. My personal experience. Uh, controller, no good. Uh, loot this bear trap. Gotta be careful. Bear traps, mushrooms, don't step on them. Ooh, nice. Getting lots of junk. But, uh, yeah, you hold down right-click on the mouse, and then uh, left-click is attack. You also have a quick attack, which is your middle mouse button. So, so yeah, very handy. Damn, dude, getting all the junk. It's pretty nice. If you see anything, corpses, anything like that, um, definitely pick them uh, pick them up. Sometimes there'll be corpses that you can search. If the corpse says open instead of search, do not touch it. Do not touch it. Always search, never open. Because they will explode and you will get poisoned. If you have your antidote on you, it won't be as bad. But, you know, it's better... Uh, Better just to avoid it. All right, get some more bear traps. So here we are at the underground entrance. Uh, it puts a little red hue on um, the location that you're currently at. So that's handy. We're going to run out of inventory space anytime now. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll, we will deal with it. Be very careful in here. There's traps on the ground. Bear traps everywhere. This is the house. I'll find the entrance to the underground here. Um, the, the game really does, uh, kind of, it does take you by the hand for the first chapter. Kind of tells you where to go. Um, you know, once you start talking to the NPCs, like Wolfman and whatnot, uh, we'll just leave that there. Um, it does, it does. It tells you, tells you where you can and can't go. We see a little, uh, bear trap there. Um, when you have that up and down cursor over the, over your, um, over your reticle there, um, you can switch between wooden door and bear trap. So if you just press E, it'll uh, basically two uh, uh, two things occupying the same space. You can select between them. You have to be a little bit precise with it, but uh, yeah, it's just kind of handy. We'll grab those mushrooms on the way out. Again, durability. Um, durability. The mushrooms will rot. So just in case, we can do that. Shift click is your friend. I don't know why they give you medium caliber bullets here. That's kind of not great. Doesn't make sense. Uh, we'll go over what these items are and what they do during the nighttime. And we have another wardrobe right here. A pack of cigarettes, which is just, uh, uh, you know, just random items that we end up picking up. I still don't know what the pack of cigarettes are for. I'm hoping to find out in chapter two. Thinking they're having something to do with an NPC mushroom granny. And you can see right here, kind of sneaky, right? You see some scratches on the floor. That's kind of uh, telling you that, hey, you know, you can move this. Entrance to the underground tunnels. Let's go. Let's enter. Let's enter. And if there's anything you want me to cover, definitely let me know. Um, I'm just doing this live. There's not going to be any edits or anything, so um, it's going to be kind of raw. <laughs> but that's okay. This is really, like, I'm wanting to... Uh, we need a shovel in order to get past this. I, I kind of... It's going to go away once we do this instance, but... Fuck, man. That's so crazy that it's there. Yeah, the tunnel wall is crushed by enormous roots. I really want to know what's beyond that beyond that point. I need to start a new game, get a shovel as quickly as possible, and go dig that up. But anyway, I'm, I'm going on a rant. Um, so here we are in the underground entrance. There's a little backpack here, so let's uh, check it. A light bulb dimly lights the wet walls of the underground passage. The further part is shrouded in complete darkness. I need a light source to continue. So we need to make... Light source. Motorcycle magazine. Very good. So, we hit tab, go in our crafting menu, and we don't have rags or anything. Interesting. But we do have a torch, so we'll be just fine. We'll be just fine. Hopefully the torch will uh, get us through the rest of it. Usually, usually the um, 
gave you, at least in the previous alphas, uh, they gave you the necessary materials to make a torch here. But unfortunately, they don't do that anymore. So, I guess you're meant to, yeah, don't mind that guy. He's not going to hurt you. Um, I guess you're meant to go out and explore a little bit before you go here. But, I don't know. I just like doing this first. Just like doing this first. You get some, you get some items. You get to examine this lovely guy and get some odd meat for your, uh, yeah, we can take another look at that. Don't worry, he won't hurt you. you know, no problems down here at all. Um, yeah, we can take our torch off now that we see some light. Um, yeah, you can get some, uh, I, I think that meat should, uh, value 60. It should give us some really good essence. We might be able to level up off of it. So, just on our first night, which is, uh, pretty, pretty excellent. Pretty excellent. And this leads us to the, um, this is the way out of chapter one the armored door but uh, I think I think I'm gonna try just leaving we're not gonna examine anything it did save there is a vent there's an event that happens if you um, come down here and then leave but uh should be okay yeah it's happening regardless all right so this earthquake is gonna seal off that part that we could have uh, used the uh, shovel on but that's all right oh actually I think there's another mushroom No? Damn. There was one other one other way. It was up and around to the left. Is it over here? Yeah, there you are. I knew it. I knew it. Torch is still going okay. Which is just fine. Prepare yourself because there will be an, an, an enemy called a chomper who is going to run after us any moment now. There he is. All you have to do is just hold down sprint for a couple of seconds. Let go of it for a couple of seconds. Hold it down again for a couple seconds. Let go of it for a couple seconds. You don't want to drain all your stamina. Stamina management is very important in this game. Uh, very, very crucial. That is... It's like Dark Souls, in a way. Um, how important it is. I mean, if you've ever played uh, Dark Souls before, you know you don't want to just... Uh, oops. Oh, there's... A, yeah, yeah, there it is right there. I, I totally missed the sack. So this is where you get your rags. This is where you'll be able to make your... Um, make your torch so here let's uh, use up this torch there we go and we can grab the other stuff wait a minute what oh there's clothes and a sack interesting all right yeah so we get everything yeah all right so we got everything so there's clothes clothing there and there's a sack there perfect we already searched that corpse, so very good. But yeah, so when you hold down shift, you sprint. Whenever you use a weapon, you sprint. Um, it's very, very important to keep an eye on that. You don't want to be caught fighting an enemy and being out of stamina. You really, really want to manage that. Um, there's a couple of other moves that you have in your arsenal, aside from just sprinting. Well, one other. And if, you, if you're using a keyboard and mouse, I don't know what it is for controller, but if you're using keyboard and mouse, it's control which is a hop backwards, which is, if you practice with it a lot, um, that's a dog. We don't want to fuck with dogs right now. You want to leave everything alone right now. Like, do not engage with any enemy whatsoever at all. At all. But, um, yeah, the hop backwards, once you, once you, um, kind of master it, it's really, really good when you're fighting certain enemies, uh, being able to hop out of the way like that. There's our home. Our inventory is full. We need to go home for sure. That is uh, very, very important. Very important. Dump all our items off. Uh, we'll just throw everything in there right now. Kind of appraise our situation. See what we're doing. Well, we're obviously keeping that on us. Board with nails. Very important. A little bit more important though for us is to barricade at least. Barricade this door and make this doorway. So that's what we will be doing first. Uh, so let's pick up the plank with our planks and our nails. We'll keep the lock pick on us. That's good to have on us regardless. Um, there's our nails. Let's go build the door. You can stay in other rooms if you want to. You don't have to stay in here. I'm just saying what works for me. So, you know, if you feel like staying in another room, then uh, by all means, you can do that. All right, we need more wood. So let's go look for more wood. Um, actually, since we're doing that, I'm going to be a little daring and leave that behind. We'll also leave the lockpick behind. 
for now. Let's cook up these mushrooms before they go off. As you can see, the little red line right there, durability is draining. So, so yeah. So, boop. Yeah, that was pretty healthy. And our first perk. It's pretty nice. Unfortunately, with your first perk comes your first negative perk, which is shadows, and you have to take it. You have no choice. Staying in dark areas at night can be dangerous to me, so you want to stay in the light. Um, so, uh, you have four perks to choose from at the first tier. Eagle, uh, eagle Eye, I'll be able to see further. This is the one I normally choose. I'm going to be taking uh, Mushroom Healing this time. But, uh, and we'll also take Eagle Eye, but I'm going to take Mushroom Healing uh, first. Moth, once a day I'll be able to heal myself by standing next to an electric light source, which is pretty great. I like using Moth. Moth's uh, pretty nice. And then Navigator, once a day I'll be able to learn my current location on the map. Um, that can be helpful, but, you know, I find that if I just walk a little bit further, like if I'm lost, if I walk around a little bit, kind of in a circle, uh, I'll find a, I'll find a, uh, a map marker, you know. Like, I'll be able to see a location. But like, you know how it turns red when you're near it or on it. Um, yeah, it's it's usually pretty easy to find. So, got to take that one, and we will take mushroom. Actually, let's take moth. Let's take moth. We'll take a mushroom healing later. So, yeah. So, there we go. We've got our, you know, first dose. Two out of 150 essence. I guess there's a little bit of juice left there at the bottom. So, so yeah, we've got our first dose all done. The game saves whenever you interact with uh, the stove, which is nice to know. If you want to save your game real quick before quitting, um, always don't just quit out. Always go to the oven. Always go to the oven. So which way do you want to go? I feel like um, log piles are going to be right here. Usually they are. The map is um, <sighs> sort of randomly, randomly generated from a pool of pre-made maps, if that makes any sense at all. So the orientation of where the Dry Meadow, Silent Forest, and the Old Woods are... They're, they're, they change orientation, but within a collective of uh, pre-made pre maps. So it is random up to a point, uh, up to a point, a as well as the locations of um, the other locations. So um, if you do look at the map, there's always going to be certain, certain areas that look the same. Like right here, this curve, that is the Wolfman's, uh, Wolfman's house, for sure. This right here is the entrance to the village, for sure. Uh, you know, things like that will always be like that. This right here is the train wreck. If you just <laughs> memorize those things, uh, you'll know where uh, things are for the most part, primarily. All right, let's go back here. I'm betting there's some wood back here, which we need. We have fuel enough for one night, so we can use fuel. That is a savage times two. We will not be fucking with those guys. And here's a dead person. And it says search, so that's safe. That's safe. Again, remember, we have to you have to avoid enemies at all costs right now. We don't have plank with nails. We don't have a torch. Torches are really good to uh, kind of just craft at the beginning. You can make a torch and defend yourself with it. You'll be able to use it against a couple of dogs at least. Um, that's the brook. I don't really want to do the brook right now. Um, yeah, so just... I hear a violin in the distance. A violin kid. That is a whole bunch of awfulness right there. Don't want to mess with those dogs. But yeah, just avoid conflict. Avoid conflict until you got your plank with nails. Then we'll go over, once we get our weapon, we'll go over uh, how to fight dogs and stuff like that. If we do make another episode of this. So if you guys want more, like I said, you know, leave likes and comments. Uh, and that'll, that'll tell me that you guys want more of whatever this is. <laughs> I was wrong. Holy shit. There is no wood over there. Let's go. Let's go north then. See if we can find something up here. There's a dog right there. Use your use your cursor too. Like you see how it uncovers under the trees. Like look around a lot. You know, it really helps. That's what see further does too. It lets you uh, obviously see further. So which is honestly I probably should have taken that. That's why I usually take it. Is uh, it's it helps a lot with survival at the beginning. Once you get better at the game, you you don't really need it as much. See further. You know, it's good, but, you know, honestly, you don't really need it. That's a dog. Let's avoid that. Wow, we're striking out with uh, wood piles, aren't we? We certainly are. But, yeah, I mean, I would love to go through, like, you know, um, 
other, you know, I, again, I'm not like the end all be all badass master of uh, Darkwood combat, but I would love to go over how to fight chompers with different weapons, except for the shovel, because I fucking suck using the shovel. I don't even feel like the shovel should be used as a melee weapon. It's only for digging. <laughs> I hate it. I hate the shovel. It's powerful, though. You can do some great damage with the shovel, but um, I prefer my favorite. My favorite weapon in the game is the sickle. I think the sickle is uh, pretty much superior to everything. Damn, dude, all that junk. Oh, shit, Norman. All right, this will be a good. So, um, like I was saying, the hop out of the way thing. Boop. See, it, again, hard to master. Try to get him to set that off, but we're, uh, we're running away. We're running away. Right, we'll grab this. Looks like it's already starting to get nighttime. Uh, yeah, I was talking and not paying attention to the screen, but that's okay. Um, I was thinking maybe I should have done this um, post commentary <laughs> after recording, but uh, I don't I, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I'd rather do shit live. Um, any wood at all? Any? We really need wood. Actually, this will be a good uh, this will be a good kind of on the fly if uh, if you get stuck like this without resources. Ooh, there's a bunny. Too bad I can't punch him or anything. Another corpse too with some nails. Um, yeah, this will be good on the fly, how to survive in case shit goes backwards and wrong and you can't find enough stuff to, uh, to tide you over, like, enough wood or anything. Because we are defenseless right now, pretty much. I can smell your stench from far away, meat. Yeah, let's talk to the wolfman. Talking to any NPC saves your game, and it also will, uh, pause time, so, which is great. And he should have a little bit of reputation with us. So NPCs are a really big part of the game. They give you access to resources via the trade option. Not all NPCs have the trade option, but uh, a few of them do. Uh, Wolfman, obviously, being one of them. So we could trade. We start with 50 rep, which is great for us. He only... Uh, you can... Excuse me. <clears throat> I had a hiccup. Um, you can trade items like uh, weapons and stuff. I think bear traps he'll take. Any gun parts, uh, bullets food I think uh, stuff like that so you can trade with them but for us what do we need Could probably use some more fuel but that's too expensive for us uh, what's gonna be the most handy immediately probably a bottle we can use the bottle for defense that might help out a little bit we should be able to make a torch at home so yeah let's we'll grab a bottle that's 20 we got 30 left. Maybe buy some nails. Yeah. Fill the rest up with nails. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really matter at this point. We'll just do that. All right. And we'll take off. We're not going to gossip or anything or show at him. All right. So, again, it's denoted with red where you're at. Let's run back to our hideout, which is just immediately west of us. And go see if we can make... Um, See if we can make a torch at least. I must return to my hideout before nightfall. You got it, buddy. You got it. Did we take moth? Yeah, we took moth. All right. And if shit gets too backwards, we'll just use moth. And that'll heal us. Ah, I should have brought lockpick. There's crates strewn around um, the, the game world. And you can open them with lockpick. There's also other crates that you can open with uh, codes. But you have to discover those codes. Got lucky with no dog interactions, so that's pretty great. There is a there is a point where after you've played long enough, you kind of generally know what time it is in in the game. Um, I'm pretty good at telling the time, but there is a watch item in the game that you can get later. Yeah, push that over. All right, workbench. We could still make plank with nails. It only requires two. You know what? Yeah, let's just do that. It'll be easier for us to defend ourselves at night if we just do that. So, board with nails. That's our first item. We can't upgrade it yet because we're going to need, like, there's a pipe that we need and some junk for that one. Um, you know, we got the nails for that one. But we need to upgrade our uh, workbench before we can handle that. And then also some tape and two pipes for that one. So, uh, we'll have to deal with that later. It is nighttime, so let's go turn the generator on. Always remember to do that. 
There again, remember there's enough fuel to last one night here. And again, since we have that, uh, it shows up right here under me. We have shadows now, so we always have to be in the light. Always have to be in the light. We don't have a door either, so what we're going to do is push this wardrobe right here. That will kind of seal us in a little bit. Enemies can come in and just push from the sides, though, and push it out of the way. But then we'll just uh, combat them and then uh, push it back into place again. So let's go over combat um, a little bit more in depth. So your first weapon is usually always going to be plank with nails unless you get incredibly lucky somehow and get something else. Um, just like the torch, it has it has a similar move set. So you have a wind up, which yeah, it takes a little while to wind up. So you really need to kind of plan your attacks. You know, me when one, the second I see an enemy, I like to wind up and just hold it. So and then there's your attack. It drains one of those uh, one of those quarters of your stamina bar. And then you also have a fast attack, which is the middle mouse button, which drains more. It drains half and like an eighth, you know. So that the fast attack is normally used for me as a finisher um, or an oh shit button. Like it, it really depends on what I'm fighting. But for the most part, I use it as a finisher. Just get it done. Get them done. Kill them, you know. Yeah, pretty much. Um... There's also, there's some of the tactics that you can use as far as jumping backwards and, and then striking, but it's a little difficult because you have the wind up. Uh, you can, I don't think you can jump backwards and have it up at the same time. Yeah, it cancels that out. So you have to be mindful of that. Have to be mindful of your stamina. Don't ride your shift button. I notice, like when I watch other people play, I notice they ride the shift button. They just hold down. You know, they have their pinky on the shift button the whole time. They're running around like crazy, fighting, fighting, fighting. Don't do that. You know, tactically, oh, wow. Lucky we didn't step on that. Um, mushroom spawned during the nighttime. Um, so, we got lucky that it spawned in here. So, that's pretty cool. Usually, they spawn out there. Um, yeah, you don't want to hold down the shift button. Just, you know, it's okay. You got to take a deep breath. I know it's like you know, frantically you're attacking stuff and things are going crazy. But you have to you have to remain calm. Keep your keep your hand off the shift button unless you're intentionally running. Um, something's coming straight at you. You can dodge. So you know you can dodge with the shift button. Only if you have stamina. If you don't have stamina because you're running around like crazy, screaming and freaking out, you know it's it's not gonna do anybody any good. So you gotta remember that. Um, ease up on the stamina button. I'm just listening for a second. <laughs> Here, hold on. Let's let's listen to the sounds. I don't know what that is. All right, we're all good. Um, aside from that, there's no other moves for the plank with nails. Again, uh, middle mouse button as a finisher. Um, there's some adv more advanced moves that I use for certain enemies. This next day, we'll go fight a couple. Um, and just to kind of give you an idea, we'll start with the dogs. Um, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, if we do make another episode, I don't know. I don't know. I, I after after the last twenty minutes or so, I'm kind of have a good feeling about it. So we can we could probably make this into a series, but it's all dependent on you guys, on how you guys feel about it. So I don't I don't want to be a, a tutorial walkthrough channel. It's just not. It doesn't interest me. But for the sake of Darkwood, and for helping you guys out, um, I I'm okay with it <laughs> for this game. <laughs> no other games though. I wouldn't feel comfortable about it with any other games but again really you should get good at um at that back step uh, i don't use it often enough and it's uh it's a really badass maneuver um people really uh, people complain about the combat they say the combat's clunky in darkwood i don't find that to be the case at all i i feel like it has a really good intuitive good feeling combat uh once you get used to it there's a learning curve for fucking sure <laughs> there's a big learning curve when i first started playing the game I, it was a disaster. I was terrible at it. But, uh, you know, it clicks after a while, and you're like, okay, okay, I see it. But it takes practice, you know? I've got 300 hours in this game or so, you know? So it's, it's just like anything. It's, it takes practice. And, like, use your head. And don't ride the stamina button. I don't, I like, I can't stress that enough. 
You know, depleting your stamina is like the worst thing you can do. You run around, run around, run around, and then you use that, and then you keep running. Look, you're out of stamina. I can't attack at all, you know, so. And then you're just fucked. The wolves will get you. The chompers will eat your booty. And it'll be just terrible. Day two. All right. Yeah, we'll go a little bit into day two. Gain reputation, 100 from the trader. Whenever you uh, successfully go through a night unscathed, you get uh, reputation from uh, there's a trader. So uh, here, let's go to the workbench. We can sell stuff to the trader, which I'm going to do. Drop all this stuff off. We're going to cook that mushroom before we talk to the trader, though. I'm going to sell this pill and I'm going to sell this bread, but we'll explain what they do first. Uh, the pills, they do the same thing. Uh, the pills, if you eat them, it will add a little effect box up here that lasts for roughly like, I don't know, I think it's like 45 seconds or so um, for stamina. So your stamina will be doubled, I think. And your stamina recovery is also doubled. So you'll be able to run farther and faster. And well, you can't run faster, but you'll be able to run further <laughs> at least. And bread, you eat a whole loaf of bread. And for some strange reason, you're able to uh, sprint for long, long periods of time. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I have no idea. It, it's just the way it is. So yeah, so we'll be selling those things. We'll also be selling the medium caliber bullet because it's pointless. And I'm gonna be selling the battery. Don't hoard stuff at the beginning. You'll get plenty of items. Uh, you'll get plenty of resources in the game. Don't be stingy with uh, with your stuff. You don't. There's no need to be frugal. Just uh, you know, sell it. Keep the stuff that you need though, for sure. You know, like uh, bandages at the beginning are helpful. Um, obviously, lockpick gasoline is like gasoline, planks, and nails. Number one, number one resources. Hold on to your bottles because they are very, very handy as well. Uh, matchsticks, not as handy in the beginning, but they're good for making torches if you want to make a torch. But um, primarily, you really, really want to hold on to your fuel and uh, planks and nails and stuff. All right, let's go talk to this trader. Oh, one other thing too. Um, when you awake the next morning, you don't need to hurry. The day is uh, free frozen, so the daytime's frozen until you leave the boundaries of your house. So you're all good. You can take your time, kind of uh, wander around, do whatever you want, you know, move things around, uh, yeah, and whatnot. And also, another side note, um, the generator is currently on, but it is not using fuel. Since, the t since time is frozen, uh, no fuel is being consumed. So don't worry about it. Just make sure you turn it off before you leave for the day. So that's all you got to do. All right, let's cook this mushroom. These ones are really good. Uh, we get 20 essence from that one. So the ones you find at night are tasty as shit. So it's a good thing. So we get another NPC. Hey, man. How's it going? Very, very good. All right, so let's trade. Uh, we start off with 100 rep for surviving the night, which is nice. He, got, he has a lot of uh, items, which is uh, wonderful. So let's sell. See how much rep we turn up with. Uh, 230, which is awesome. You know what we're buying. First thing I buy, I just fi start filling up with uh, boards and nails. It's There's other ways. There is a sawmill next to your home, but I rarely use it. Uh, I don't use the sawmill too often. At the beginning, I just use my reputation. I find it, I find it it's more efficient. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But uh, yeah, instead of using my fuel on on the sawmill, I like to use my fuel for other things. So like the generator and uh, other stuff like that. Uh, we'll hold off on buying upgrade materials, um, all, although we could, but I, I don't feel that we need to right now. Um, we'll deal with that later. Flares are very important. I think we have two flares, right? Let's go take a look. Make sure. I thought we had two flares. Flares are absolutely integral. No, I don't have any flares. All right, so we're buying a flare for this next evening, uh, if we if we do it. We're not going to do the next evening in this uh, in this episode, but uh, the next episode. So sixty, we're buying it. Uh, we, we might find one while we're out, but on the slim chance that we don't find one while we're out, uh, we need it. Absolutely need it. Uh, we'll just show them this advance whatever NPC storyline is going on there. We will put the flare in this wardrobe for the evening. The flare is the number one way to combat those ghosts at night. Always make sure you have one on you 
in your inventory or on your hotbar at all times when you're when you're hunkering down for the evening um yeah it's it's invaluable they don't last forever but they last long enough to uh to make a, a big difference so the ghosts won't fuck with you if a flare is out they can't they just absolutely can't which is great so we will build this door i'm not going to barricade this door because we don't need to i usually just don't the only thing i barricade is that so we have some extra wood now you can barricade this but i i don't know a hideout one's kind of easy for me at this point so i don't typically uh invest too much in uh, home protection but you can go through it, it may be worthwhile for you if you want to to barricade everything up but i kind of feel like that's a waste of resources honestly that's also why i like this room is, is it's so small there's two entrances and that's all you have to take care of upkeep is you know upkeep is just this door right here if you don't barricade this door yeah that's all the upkeep you have so uh it's very very cheap to stay there um since we're not barricading that door or this door or any windows we can afford to upgrade the workbench so we'll be able to craft more items and fit more upgrades into weapons when i upgrade my workbench so let's upgrade it let's see what we get in our next tier of items uh molotov cocktails we can't access yet we need to upgrade our workbench some more but we can make bear traps which is great we actually have a ton of junk so um in the next video we will uh we will make some some bear traps and set them up in front of the door right here and also probably probably somewhere else maybe i don't know we'll we'll see we'll see uh let's go turn the generator off we do need fuel for the evening uh for this next evening so we're gonna need to prioritize finding fuel but uh for now we're gonna go fight a few dogs and kind of uh discuss combat tactics and whatnot um let's see what else about hideout have we not covered oh the well um you can build the well with four planks it will heal you um if you drink from the well so yeah i, I never use it I, it's i don't know why it's there honestly it doesn't really make sense to me but whatever it's kind of useless so and here's the sawmill just like the generator you add fuel to it and then you can use it so um, it has it starts with 70 fuel, which is about equivalent to like seven boards worth of uh, Worth of fuel that it'll cut. So that's pretty nice All right, let's go fight. Um There's wolfman camp. I think there's a there was a couple of dogs up here And I know that there's fuel right here between the uh, Old woods and the dry meadow entrance. So let's go up there real quick and we'll fight like two dogs and uh, We'll uh, call the episode there Oh, uh, if you run on paths, your it's just like a stamina pill. Your stamina is uh, your stamina consumption is reduced. So remember that too. Run on paths as off, often as possible. So, engaging in combat um, with wolves, you get close to them, they'll get spooked. If you back off, they'll calm down. Um, if you spook them for long enough, you can't sneak up on them as well, uh, which I don't want to do. If you get close enough, they'll run after you. So what you want to do, here, we'll just try with certain dodges for now. Um, you want to keep your cursor on them at all times. You want to be able to see them at all times. So, I mean, this is good practice, just keeping your cursor on them. And then sprint out of the way when they get close. When it looks like they're about to bite, you can sprint out of the way. You can use the, the jump button to jump out of the way, but I don't know. I, I don't use it too much for these guys. So as far as like combat goes, as soon as you get out of the way of them, circle around one side of them like that. It's kind of like a dance, you know, Whoop! like that. You kind of, uh, or or not like a dance, more like um, uh, conquistadors, conquistadors, the the guys who uh, have the bulls, the bulls charge at them, matadors. I can't remember what they're called, um, <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, yeah, like you're like, Toro, Toro, and then you're like, Ole, <laughs> and they go ahead and you hit him with the plank. Like, that's that's a good good way, good solid way of killing dogs without um, without getting hit yourself. Let's see if we can find another one to kind of uh, do that again. Let's take a look. Let's see what we got. Doggy, doggy, doggy. 
A burn house location. Yeah, here we go. This is the top part. So where we'll get the fuel. There's not going to be any enemies up here, but uh, we're not going to be able to transition through here. So this place is, uh, yeah, this, place, this door is locked right here. Do have a mushroom for us though, which is perfect. You want to collect mushrooms while you're out. Sometimes it's worth it to leave it though. Those ones are poisonous mushrooms. You step on those, you get poisoned. So it's no good. No good at all. Ah, we did find a flare. So that's handy, but that's okay. It's good to have more than one. You want as many as you can handle. But yeah, as I said, doors locked. There's dudes talking there, but we don't need to f worry about them. There's our fuel for the evening, so we'll be able to last. Be able to last the night. Some more junk. We'll definitely make some bear traps now then. All right. There's Norman. I could kill him with the plank and nail, I think. I don't think it actually has enough durability to kill Norman. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, you get antlers for killing him, though. That bunny totally spotted us. I wonder if we can get him. Oh, nice! <laughs> good dead rabbit. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I never am able to get those rabbits like that. We got lucky. Um, also, I was going to say, when you come across a body like this, usually you'll see... Um, you'll see crows flying away. Anytime you hear crows flying away from a certain location, that means that there's a dead body or ravens or whatever. Um, that means there's a dead body nearby. So make sure you look around. Make sure you look around. Broken tree. I think there's a dead guy over here. Yep, there he is. Corpse. There's more fuel. You can stack fuel. There's not a lot of items in the game that you can stack, but you can stack fuel, which is uh, handy to know. Come on, we were <laughs> last l last day. We were not wanting to run into dogs, and we found a bunch of them. And now I'm actually looking for them, and I can't seem to find any. But yeah, we'll do some tactics with fighting Norman eventually here. Corpse search, nice. More searches. That's pretty good. And we're back at the underground entrance. All right. Yeah, I want to get one more one more Doge kill in. So I can kind of show you guys what to do. Is there dogs in here? Yeah, there's a bunch of dogs in here. So here, let's uh you can lure a couple out at a time too. Here, maybe how how to handle two. Let's do that. It's a little it's a little more tough. It's kinda overwhelming. But again, it's the same principle. You know? You wanna kinda have them in the same line of sight though and then whip around the side you just whip around the side whip around the side you don't even need to sprint honestly um, sprinting is only for when you're when you're like getting ready to attack um, you can just walk the whole time but remember hold cursor on them keep the cursor on them as much as you possibly can and then as they charge at you just whoop Right around the side. So, yeah. Thus ends the tutorial on how to kill dogs. <laughs> Marvelous. Alright. Well, let's head back. Save our game. And, uh... Next time when we come back, maybe we'll poke... We'll poke a savage or two. And, uh, kind of do some tactics for killing savages with the planks, plank with nails. Um... Maybe take a whack at Norman, too. You, I don't really fight him here in the... Oops. Where am I going? <laughs> I gotta go this way. Um, I don't really fight him in the dry meadow. There's no real point outside of getting... Uh, you can get the antlers, which is like 100 reputation if you trade it out. Or you can eat them, and it's a stamina... Kind of like a white pill stamina boost, which is pointless. It's better just to sell it. Sell the antlers. But uh, I guess. Maybe we'll kill them. Maybe we won't. We'll see. Meat's pretty handy though. Meat's a good item. Um, you can use it with a bear trap. Put the meat on the bear trap, the dog meat on the bear trap, and uh, it'll lure enemies to it. And they will suffer. They will get pinched. And then you can finish them off, which is pretty nice. Pretty nice. Alright. So again, save our game. Use this. Um, I think we got one mushroom, right? 
Oh, yeah, we got odd meat and mushroom. Cool. So as you can see, already on our second dose, um, not giving us, you know, it takes more essence, 150 now to fill up. So not giving us as much as it previously was, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so if you guys found this interesting, definitely uh, leave a like, leave a comment. If you have anything to add, uh, go for it. If you guys want to see more, definitely comment. And again, uh, you know, leave likes and stuff to let me know. I would love to do like one of these a day. That'd be kind of nice. Um, I had a good time. A little bit dry, but you know, that's what that's the purpose of it is to uh, you know, kind of, kind of just uh, tutorialize it and uh, not make it about the lore or anything. It's just going to be more about um, you know, tactics and survival and things like that. So yeah, all right. I guess we'll leave it there. Hopefully this helped you guys. All right, thank you all so much for watching. I'm Lone Gray, and this has been Alone Surviving in Darkwood. Sure, we'll we'll find a better title than that. All right, see you guys next time. <laughs> Bye.